please hit subscribe. This problem appears at the qualifying examinations for applicants for Japanese government or MEC scholarships 2020. This problem is from the 2020 chemistry questionnaire for the undergraduate scholarships. The answer key and the original questions are linked in the description. Here's the fourth problem, fourth and final problem in the third section. When nitrogen and water were added into a volume variable reactor with a smooth piston as shown in the figure below, the volume of gas was 3.0 liters and the total pressure was 4.3 times 10 to the 4 pascals. Temperature was kept at 27 degrees Celsius. The saturated vapor pressure of water is 3.0 times 10 to the 3 pascals at 27 degrees Celsius. Dissolution of nitrogen gas in water is negligible. Now we need to compute the partial pressure of nitrogen to two significant figures. And the piston was moved to decrease the volume of gas to 2.0 liters at constant temperature of 27 degrees Celsius. Calculate the total pressure to two significant figures. We review two key concepts for this problem. First is the idea of Dalton's law of partial pressures. It says that the total pressure of a mixture, that is P sub T, is equal to the sum of the partial pressures of its components. So you have a mixture that is made up of several gases, then you just sum the pressures due to each of the gas component. And that's why we have an I here. And in this case, we only have water and nitrogen. So we only have two partial pressures involved. And when we say partial pressure, we actually mean the pressure exerted by a component gas in a gas mixture. So nitrogen will exert some pressure. The water vapor will also exert some pressure. The amount of pressure that the nitrogen exerts is the partial pressure due to nitrogen. And the amount of pressure that the nitrogen, or rather the water exerts, Water vapor in this case is the partial pressure due to the water vapor. And the total of that, the sum of the pressure exerted by the nitrogen and the water should equal to the total pressure of the mixture. And that is Dalton's law of partial pressures. Secondly, we review the concept of saturated water vapor, or rather vapor pressure, saturated vapor pressure. In this case, that's for water. This is the pressure on top of a liquid. So that's the pressure of the vapor above the liquid at thermodynamic equilibrium. Thermodynamic equilibrium means that there is no net change in the amount of the liquid and the gas. So the gas is turning into liquid at the same rate as the liquid is turning into gas. And so the, the amount of liquid stays stable and the amount of gas also stays stable. And we can actually measure this vapor pressure, saturated vapor pressure. And we know that this changes only with the temperature and the concentration of the liquid. So if the temperature is changed, then that vapor pressure, that is the amount of, that is related to the amount of the vapor on top of the gas, or rather on top of the liquid, that will change with temperature. Also, if you change the concentration of the liquid mixture below, that will also change the, the vapor pressure of the gas on top of the liquid. But if you don't change any of these, temperature or concentration, then you probably have the same saturated vapor pressure. And, and so you will have the same amount of partial pressure due to that in your mixture. Now let's do the first one here. It says we need to calculate the partial pressure of nitrogen. So we know that the, that the total pressure from the problem is 4.3 times 10 to the 4 pascals. So that's the total pressure of the vapor here. We also know, or rather we don't know that the partial pressure due to the nitrogen gas. So that's what we're looking for. But we know that the partial pressure due to the water here is 3.0 times 10 to the 3 pascals and that's actually the saturated vapor pressure 
and we know that because the water is because we assume the water to be in in thermodynamic equilibrium with its vapor now what that means is that we're not seeing the amount of liquid here getting smaller or getting larger so it's not increasing nor decreasing the water here and that tells us that really there is no movement in the amount of water and that's why we say there's thermodynamic equilibrium the amount of the water here is not changing and the amount of the water vapor is not changing under this condition under those conditions we say that the partial pressure of the water is actually equal to the vapor pressure saturated vapor pressure of the water and that's why we know that this is to be the case here because again the amount of water is not changing we assume it to be not changing it's not increasing or decreasing due to evaporation and condensation then we remember dalton's law it says that the total pressure of the mixture that's p sub t is equal to the sum of the partial pressures so we need this partial pressure from nitrogen and this partial pressure from water now we know the total pressure and the partial water partial pressure from water so we substitute that and now we can solve for p sub nitrogen and we just note that the partial pressure of water is 3.0 times sin to the 3 so we need to convert that to a form where we have times 10 to the 4 so that it's they're easy to subtract so this is what we get 0 0.30 times 10 to the 4 and solving for p sub n2 we get that the partial pressure due to nitrogen is actually 4.0 times 10 to the fourth pascals and again we need two significant figures according to the problem here so that's 4.0 there now for the second problem we decrease the volume of gas here from three liters to two liters so we move down the piston here now we need to calculate the total pressure after moving the piston down first we note that the partial pressure the partial pressure of water remains the same that's the saturated vapor pressure that's because the amount of water we're, we're thinking of water here as as in equilibrium with its vapor so that means it's not boiling and also it's not condensing so it's it stays the same it's it's water with some water vapor on top and whenever that is the case whenever it is not boiling and it is not condensing we say that the that the pressure on top of that water is equal to the saturated vapor pressure and in this case this is that value now we just have to know the contribution of the nitrogen gas so the nitrogen gas would have also would have been compressed and because there's no nitrogen liquid here so we, we don't really have a a saturated vapor pressure for nitrogen in this problem because we don't have liquid nitrogen here and and what we know is that it will have to it will ha have to adjust according to this relationship here this relationship is called Boyle's law and this is easily uh, derivable from from the ideal gas law and what this says is that the pressure times the volume before the compression before the volume change is equal to the pressure times the volume after the change in the volume so this should be at constant temperature though which is what we have here in the problem now we are looking for this term here this is the pressure after the volume has been changed so we move it here and now we're left with this bit here is just the pressure the partial pressure of nitrogen before the change in volume and here we have the volume occupied by the mixture before the change and this one after the change and we compute that we get this now that is the contribution of the partial pressure due to nitrogen now we need to add it with the contribution of the partial pressure of water and so the total partial or rather the total pressure of the mixture gas mixture of water and nitrogen is just the sum and that is equal to 6.30 or rather in this case 6.3 because we need two significant figures 6.3 times 10 to the fourth pascals
If you learned something new today, please help my channel by clicking the subscribe button and the bell for the notifications. See ya!